In this free video course, I'm going to show you the basics of chart patterns for trading stocks, forex, cryptocurrencies, or pretty much any market you want to trade through a price chart, since these patterns are universal, so they are applicable to all markets and all time frames. In this course, you're going to learn how to identify the patterns, the classifications between reversal, continuation, and neutral patterns, and also the classification between bullish and bearish patterns. We're also going to study the logic behind each pattern and different ways to trade them. At last, we're going to make some conclusions about the use of chart patterns and explore some advantages and disadvantages of this trading technique. The goal of this course is to show you the reality of using these patterns, which is something that most trading educators tend to purposefully ignore. Right from the start, I can say that I'm not a fan of these patterns, but I want to create a reference for people to learn the advantages and the pitfalls so that's why I created this free course. I believe it's a good idea to learn these patterns just for the sake of understanding their limitations. Before we begin, you should understand that this video, just like any other content you will find on my channel and website, is for educational purposes only. This is not investment advice. Trade at your own risk. With that said, let's begin first by talking about how to classify the chart patterns. The chart patterns classification works a lot like the candlestick patterns classification. If you don't know how candlestick patterns work, I have a free candlestick patterns course you can check out in the YouTube card. There are basically two ways of classifying the chart patterns, and they add on top of each other, as we'll see in a moment. The chart patterns are classified by direction and type. Let's begin by studying the first classification, which is the direction of the chart pattern. The direction classification relates to the direction that price is supposed to go after the pattern. Since we are talking about price charts, there are only two directions that price can go, meaning that it can either go up or it can go down after the pattern. When the chart pattern implies that price will go up after the pattern, we classify it as a bullish pattern. When the chart pattern implies that price will go down after the pattern, we classify it as a bearish pattern. Beyond the direction classification, we also have another type of classification that adds on top of the first one, which is the type. There are three types of chart patterns. The reversal patterns, the continuation patterns, and the neutral patterns. The type classification tells what's going to happen with price after the pattern in relation to what was happening with price before the pattern. Let's analyze these three types individually. Reversal chart patterns indicate that price will go in the opposite direction after the pattern is formed. For example, if price is going up and a reversal chart pattern appears, it means that price will go down after the pattern. The opposite is also true, of course. If price is going down and the reversal chart pattern appears, it means that price will go up after the pattern. The continuation chart pattern indicates that price will resume its current direction after the pattern. For example, if price is going up and a continuation chart pattern appears, it means that price will continue going up after the pattern. By the same token, if price is going down and a continuation chart pattern appears, it indicates that price will continue going down after the pattern. At last, we have the neutral chart pattern classification, which means that price can either go up or down depending where price breaks out of the pattern. The way chart patterns are classified is by combining these two types of classifications together. For example, when we talk about a bullish reversal chart pattern, we are talking about a pattern that appears when price is going down in order to signal a reversal to the upside. That's the case because the term bullish indicates what's going to happen after the pattern, which in this case is going up, and the term reversal means that price will change its direction after the pattern. If price will change direction after the pattern and it will go up, it necessarily means that it was going down before the pattern. In a bearish continuation pattern, price will be going down, and after the pattern appears, price will continue going down. In neutral patterns, we don't care about what's happening before the pattern. We simply take a look at which side price breaks out of the pattern, since that's the direction it will probably go. So if you see a neutral pattern, and price breaks out to the upside, the pattern is indicating that price will go up. If price breaks to the downside, the pattern is indicating that price will go down. If these classifications don't make much sense to you, they will become clearer as we walk through the examples of each pattern. Let's now move on to the study of the most relevant chart patterns one by one. 
we will begin exploring each pattern in each classification starting with the reversal patterns first. So these are the patterns that will indicate a change in price direction after the pattern is confirmed. The first chart pattern we'll analyze is the famous head and shoulders pattern. The head and shoulders is a bearish reversal pattern and it looks like this. Notice that price will be going up and after the pattern it will go down. There are a few important elements in a head and shoulders pattern. We have the shoulders, which are highlighted by numbers 1 and 5, the head, which is highlighted by number 3, and the neckline, which is highlighted by the line connecting numbers 2 and 4. This chart pattern receives this name because the price action will resemble the shape of head and shoulders, which is something that makes it easier to remember and detect the pattern in real time. The logic behind the pattern is that price action will make a downward turn by failing to produce a higher high in number 5 meaning that price will reach a peak in number 3, and a failed attempt to surpass number 3 in number 5. All of this means that sellers are gaining power as buyers exhaust their energy. The important thing to pay attention when attempting to trade a head and shoulders is the neckline. This is the line that will tell you when price action breaks out of the pattern, therefore confirming it, and it's also the line that will tell you where to enter the market. The ideal way to trade a head and shoulders pattern is by letting price break below the neckline and wait for price to come back and retest this line. Some people attempt to enter a short trade as soon as price breaks down the neckline, but the problem with that is that you might enter in a much less precise point, so you'll end up taking more risk and a smaller potential return. As I said, the ideal situation is to wait for price to retrace back up to the neckline, and as price reaches the neckline, it's also important to check for signs that price is indeed respecting the neckline as a resistance. For example, if price comes back to the neckline and as it reaches it, price creates some sort of bearish reversal candlestick pattern, you can think about going short. This is just one example of course. There are thousands of different things that can happen if price comes back to the neckline to retest it. So in summary, there are mainly two ways of entering a trade using a head and shoulders pattern. You can wait for price to close below the neckline and use that to trigger a trade at market, which is a more dangerous entry, or you can wait for price to close below the neckline and come back to retest it, also observing how price reacts as it reaches the neckline. Beware that it's certainly possible that price closes below the neckline and then starts to rise again, completely disrespecting the neckline. That's why it's important to enter in the most precise place possible, as it will be less risky. Beyond the entry, you also need a logical stop loss placement and a logical target, and those will depend on the type of entry you choose. The logical stop loss order is above the high number 5 because as price breaks down the neckline, high number 5 will become a confirmed supply zone or a point where sellers confirm their power. If you don't know how supply and demand trading works, check out the ultimate beginner's guide to supply and demand trading in the YouTube card. This is the safest stop loss to use in a head and shoulders. Now you can begin understanding why waiting for price to retrace to the neckline is a better idea. It's because it will diminish the size of your stop. You can also put your stop above high number 3. As your stop loss size increases, your take profit target will have to increase proportionally as well. And the larger the take profit, the lower the chance that it will be hit. The general rule for the take profit target is that it needs to be at least three times as big as your stop. And that means you need to have the discipline to let price either hit the stop or the target. You cannot close the trade as soon as price goes into profit, as this type of thing will ruin your account in the long term. Some people talk about measuring movements to create targets, but that doesn't make any sense in my view. Another detail about the head and shoulders pattern is that the neckline might not always be horizontal. Sometimes it can be sloped to the upside or sloped to the downside. You have to be careful when that happens because you want to put your stop loss order above highs that confirm the power of sellers, meaning highs that precede lower lows. Next in line we have the reverse head and shoulders pattern, which works in a similar way to the standard head and shoulders. But the reverse version is a bullish reversal pattern while the standard version is a bearish reversal pattern. The reverse head and shoulders pattern has the same configuration as the standard, but the pattern is upside down. We have a lower low followed by a higher low. The logic behind that is that sellers were able to create a low in number 3, 
but as they tried to create a lower low in number 5, they failed. The pattern is confirmed when the price breaks above the neckline, which as we already stated, can be horizontal or sloped, depending on where the previous highs and lows are located. The safer entry happens when price retraces back to the neckline after breaking above it, and the optimal and logical stop loss order is below number 5. That happens because as price breaks above the neckline, number 5 will become a confirmed demand zone, which will protect your stop loss order in most cases. Not always though. This confirmation of the demand zone might not happen if we are dealing with a reverse head and shoulders that has a down sloping neckline that is too steep. The target for the trade must be at least three times as big as the stop. You must maintain a risk reward like that if you want to survive trading in the long term, but that's a subject for another course. Next in line we have a bullish reversal pattern called double bottom, and as the name suggests, it's formed by two lows that sit in the same price level. It's a bullish reversal pattern, so price will be going down, and then a double bottom will appear to signal a reversal to the upside. The double bottom is confirmed when the breakout line that comes out of number 2 is broken to the upside. The logic behind this pattern lies once again in the simple mechanics of highs and lows in the chart. A double bottom means that there are two lows hitting the same level, and that means that the second low failed to go below the first one. This is a sign of weakness of the sellers because they were not able to surpass the last level they created themselves. If price is able to break above the high in between these two lows, it means that buyers are gaining power over the sellers. So not only did sellers fail to create a lower low, but buyers were able to break the last level where sellers came from. This breakout line is formed only by the high in between two lows, so it can only be a horizontal line. The ideal way to trade the double bottom pattern is to wait for price to break above the line and come back to retest it as support. Just like we saw previously, as price retraces back to the breakout line, you should observe if price reacts to the line. If it does, that's a moment to enter a long trade with a stop below number 1 and number 3. That's the logical stop loss order because as price breaks above the line, it confirms a demand zone in low number 3. So that zone will work as a cushion of protection for your stop. It doesn't always work of course, but by using this logic, you can increase your chances of avoiding a stop loss. The target should be at least 3 times as big as the stop loss size. Once your stop and take profit targets are set, you should not move them at all. You need to wait for the market to either hit your stop or your target. Just like we have the double bottom as a bullish reversal pattern, we also have the double top as a bearish reversal pattern. This pattern is formed by two highs that sit in the same price level. It's a bearish reversal pattern, so price will be going up, and then a double top will appear to signal a reversal to the downside. The double top is confirmed when the breakout line that comes out of number 2 is broken to the downside. The logic behind this pattern lies once again in the simple mechanics of highs and lows in the chart. A double top means that there are two highs hitting the same level, and that means that the second high failed to go above the first one. This is a sign of weakness of the buyers because they were not able to surpass the last level they created themselves. If price is able to break below the low in between these two highs, it means that sellers are gaining power over the buyers. So not only did buyers fail to create a higher high, but sellers were able to break the last level where bias came from. This breakout line is formed only by the low in between two highs, so it can only be a horizontal line. The ideal way to trade a double top pattern is to wait for price to break below the line and come back to retest it as resistance. Just like we saw previously, as price retraces back to the breakout line, you should watch and observe if price reacts to the line. If it does, that's a moment to enter a short trade with a stop above number 1 and number 3. That's the logical stop loss order because as price breaks below the line, it confirms a supply zone in high number 3. So that zone will work as a cushion of protection for your stop. It doesn't always work of course, but by using this logic, you can increase your chances of avoiding a stop loss. The target should be at least 3 times as big as the stop loss size. Once your stop and take profit targets are set, you should not move them at all. You need to wait for the market to either hit your stop or your target. There are traders that don't wait for price to retrace back to the breakout line, but as it was stated before, 
this can be a little riskier because your stop loss size will be bigger since you'll be entering in a worse position. Traders do this when they are afraid of missing the opportunity, so they sacrifice their entry a little bit, or sometimes a lot, just to be part of the trade. However, over the long run, acting like this will be bad for your equity curve. The next reversal pattern we are going to study is in some sense a logical extension of the double bottom, and it's called triple bottom. It's a bullish reversal pattern, meaning that price will be going down, and then the triple bottom will appear to signal a reversal to the upside. I said it's an extension of the double bottom because it's very similar to that pattern, but instead of two lows sitting in the same level, the triple bottom has three lows sitting in the same price level. In other words, lows 1, 3, and 5 form a nice support, which means that sellers are trying to create lower lows, but they are failing to do so. Meanwhile, buyers are gaining power to break out to the upside. One detail that we see in the triple bottom, but we don't see in the double bottom, is the fact that the breakout line or neckline now has two axes. So sometimes this line can be sloped instead of horizontal. It all depends on what will happen when you connect highs 2 and 4 to form the neckline or breakout line. The way to actually trade the pattern is the same as before. The trader should wait for a breakout to the upside of the neckline and a retracement to the neckline acting as support now. That's the ideal scenario. The stop should be below lows 1, 3, and 5, and the target should be at least 3 times as big as the stop. Normally, people teach that the target should be a measured movement. That means that the target will be roughly the same size as the stop, and unfortunately, that's not enough to produce good results in the long term due to the chaotic nature of the market. Remember that these patterns are far from being perfect, and they will fail a lot of the times, so we need to compensate that by using smart risk management, which in this case means using a take profit target that is a few times the size of the stop loss and letting the market run its course. Just like the triple bottom is an extension of the double bottom, the triple top is an extension of the double top. The triple top is a bearish reversal pattern, meaning that price will be going up, and then a triple top will appear to signal a reversal to the downside. I said it's an extension of the double top because it's very similar to that pattern, but instead of two highs sitting in the same level, the triple top has three highs sitting in the same price level. In other words, Highs 1, 3, and 5 form a nice resistance, which means that buyers are trying to create higher highs, but they are failing to do so. Meanwhile, sellers are gaining power to break out to the downside. One detail that we see in the triple top, but we don't see in the double top, is the fact that the breakout line or neckline now has two axes. So sometimes the line can be sloped instead of horizontal. It all depends on what will happen when you connect highs 2 and 4 to form the neckline or breakout line. The way to actually trade the pattern is the same as before. The trader should wait for a breakout to the downside of the breakout line and a retracement to the line acting as resistance now. That's the ideal scenario. The stop should be above highs 1, 3, and 5, and the target should be at least 3 times as big as the stop. Normally, people teach that the target should be a measured movement, but that means that the target will be roughly the same size as the stop and unfortunately, that's not enough to produce good results in the long term due to the chaotic nature of the market. Remember that these patterns are far from being perfect, and they will fail a lot of the times, so we need to compensate that by using smart risk management, which in this case means using a take profit target that is a few times the size of the stop loss and letting the market run its course. So far, we have covered the head and shoulders patterns and the double and triple tops and bottoms as part of the reversal category. We must now move on to the reversal wedges. The first we'll consider is called falling wedge, which is a bullish reversal pattern, meaning that price will be going down, and then a falling wedge will appear to signal a reversal to the upside. The wedge is a series of contracting price movements. If we connect the highs and lows, we'll observe that the two lines tend to converge to each other. The logic behind the falling wedge is that with each price movement, sellers are losing power. That's why the wedge is progressively narrower. When selling power is too low, buyers make price break out of the wedge to the upside. Using the same logic as before, the ideal entry happens when price retraces back to the upper line of the falling wedge to test it as support. The logical stop loss is below the lowest low in the wedge, 
and you should strive for a target that is at least three times as big as your stop. We also have the rising wedge, which is a bearish reversal pattern, meaning that price will be going up, and then a rising wedge will appear to signal a reversal to the downside. The wedge is a series of contracting price movements. If we connect the highs and lows, we will observe that the two lines tend to converge to each other. The logic behind the rising wedge is that with each price movement, buyers are losing power, and that's why the wedge is progressively narrower. When buying power is too low, sellers make price break out of the wedge to the downside. Using the same logic as before, the ideal entry happens when price retraces back to the lower line of the rising wedge to test it as resistance. The logical stop loss is above the highest high in the wedge, and you should strive for a target that is at least three times as big as your stop. To finalize the reversal chart patterns, we'll study a category known as expanding triangles. The bullish expanding triangle is a bullish reversal pattern, meaning that price will be going down, and then the expanding triangle will appear to signal a reversal to the upside. This chart pattern receives this name because it describes a series of expanding price movements or a progressive increase in volatility. The logic behind this pattern as a reversal signal is that the current market player is finalizing the trend by producing pronounced final drives. In the case of a bullish expanding triangle, the current market player are the sellers since price is going down, so they will produce progressively larger price movements to finalize their trend, and after that, buyers will pick it up and price will reverse direction. Notice how that's different than the wedge where the current market player is losing power. The way to trade a bullish expanding triangle is to wait for price to break above the upper line and wait for it to retrace back to this line to test it as support. The stop should be below the lowest low in the triangle and the target should be at least three times as large as the stop loss size. Next we also have the bearish expanding triangle which is a bearish reversal pattern, meaning that price will be going up and then the expanding triangle will appear to signal a reversal to the downside. This chart pattern receives this name because it describes a series of expanding price movements or a progressive increase in volatility. The logic behind this pattern as a reversal signal is that the current market player is finalizing the trend by producing pronounced final drives. In the case of a bearish expanding triangle, the current market player are the buyers since price is going up, so they will produce progressively larger price movements to finalize the trend, and after that, Sellers will assume and price will reverse direction. Notice how that's different than the wedge where the current market player is losing power. The way to trade a bearish expanding triangle is to wait for price to break below the lower line and wait for it to retrace back to this line to test it as resistance. The stop should be above the highest high in the triangle and the target should be at least three times as large as the stop loss size. This covers the reversal chart patterns. So now we'll move on to the continuation chart patterns. We'll start with probably the simplest continuation chart pattern, which is called rectangle. We have a bullish and a bearish variant. Let's begin with the bullish rectangle first. Remember that now we are talking about continuation patterns, so they signal that price will resume its current direction after the pattern is confirmed. A rectangle happens when price begins to oscillate sideways, and the resulting highs and lows form horizontal lines. That will make the pattern resemble the shape of a rectangle, and that's where the pattern name comes from. The logic behind the rectangle as a continuation pattern is that price has been trending for a while, and now there is some consolidation bound to happen since the market cannot keep rising or falling forever. If you are a beginner, you eventually notice that price is always oscillating between these two modes. It's either trending or going sideways. I'm obviously oversimplifying this, but for the purposes of this video, this is a valid perspective. The proper way to trade a bullish rectangle is to wait for price to break above the line that connects the highs and to retrace back to that line to test it as support. This is the optimal scenario, of course, but that doesn't always happen. Sometimes price breaks that line and just keeps going. This can be a problem because if you are an anxious trader, you will try to chase price once it breaks the pattern, and that can end badly. The logical stop loss is below the lows 2 and 4 because as price breaks the upper line to the upside, it will usually confirm a demand zone around 2 and 4, so you can count on the help of those buyers to protect your stop loss order. 
take profit should be at least three times as large as the stop. Remember that a continuation pattern implies that price is trending, so you might as well take advantage of that. It's important to remember that there can be more highs and lows contained inside the rectangle. Rather intuitively, we also have the bearish rectangle pattern, which happens when price is going down, and after the pattern is confirmed, price will probably continue going downwards. The logic behind a pattern and the way to trade is exactly the same as the bullish rectangle, of course. The only thing that changes is the side you're looking to trade. When price breaks below the line connecting the lows of the rectangle and retraces back to this line to test it as resistance, that's the time to open a short trade with a stop above highs 2 and 4. By the time price breaks below the lower line, it will usually confirm a supply zone around highs 2 and 4, so you can count on those sellers to help you. One of the problems you will find with these simple chart patterns is that price will oftentimes retrace much deeper and closer to the supply or demand zones so you'll find that these patterns are actually a very inaccurate way of trading. This is why learning supply and demand trading is a better idea than following these simplistic patterns. Not always, of course, but for the most part, they are not the best way of trading at all. However, some people find it easier to look for these patterns instead of analyzing price in a more organic way. The next pattern we are going to overview is called flag, and is similar to the rectangle in a way, but it has a few extra twists. Starting with the bullish flag first, imagine that you take a bullish rectangle and rotate it in a way that both lines become down sloping. The pattern receives this name because it's supposed to resemble the shape of a flag, the trending part of price being the pole and the consolidation being the flag. Once again, a simple analogy but might be useful for quickly recognizing the pattern in a visual way. The confirmation for the bullish flag happens when price breaks above the upper down sloping line and then retraces back to it to test it as support. One advantage of the flag over the rectangle is that since we are dealing with a downsloping breakout line, price needs to retrace deeper in order to signal a trade. That means your entry will be closer to your stop, and therefore, you will take less risk. The stop loss should be below the lowest low in the flag, and the take profit should be at least three times as big as the stop. The bearish flag is exactly the opposite, so imagine that you take a rectangle and rotate it in a way that both lines become upsloping. The confirmation for the bearish flag happens when the price breaks below the lower upsloping line, and then retraces back to test it as resistance. One advantage of the flag over the rectangle is that since we are dealing with an upsloping breakout line, price needs to retrace deeper in order to signal a trade. That means your entry will be closer to your stop. Therefore, you will take less risk. The stop loss should be above the highest high in the flag, and the take profit should be at least three times as big as the stop. The next pattern we are going to study is also very simple. It's exactly the same shape for the bullish and bearish variations. The pattern is called pennant, and it consists in two lines that converge to each other. We already saw reversal patterns that had lines converging to each other, like in reversal wedges. But in those patterns, price was trending. In the pennant pattern, price is going sideways, so you can imagine a horizontal line that describes the angle of the pennants. Another characteristic of pennants, which differentiate them from other patterns like symmetrical triangles, for example, is the fact that they are formed by small price movements in the middle of a powerful trend. Once again, the only difference between bullish and bearish pennants is the direction of price before and after the pattern. In a bullish pennant, price will be going up and a pennant will appear. Once price breaks the upper line and retraces back to the upper line to test it as support, a buy signal is generated with a stop below the lowest point of the pennant and a target at least three times as big as the stop. In a bearish pennant, price will be going down and a pennant will appear. Once price breaks the lower line and retraces back to the lower line to test it as resistance, a sell signal is generated with a stop above the highest point of the pennant and a target at least three times as big as the stop. Next, we have a slightly more detailed set of continuation patterns, which are the triangles. These patterns can be divided into symmetrical, ascending, and descending, and some of them only have bullish or only bearish variations. Let's begin with the symmetrical triangle. 
the symmetrical triangle is actually very similar to a pennant. The only real significant difference is that triangles tend to be larger and pennants tend to be quite small. Other than that, they are indeed very similar. In a symmetrical triangle, we have two lines converging to each other symmetrically. So the upper line is downsloping and the lower line is upsloping. And they have mirroring angles. This pattern has a bullish variation where price will be going up and then a symmetrical triangle appears to signal a continuation to the upside. The buy signal happens when price breaks out of the triangle to the upside and retraces back to the upper line to test it as support. The logical stop is below the lowest low in the triangle or below a confirmed demand zone, and the take profit is at least three times as large as the stop. In the bearish variation, price will be going down and then a symmetrical triangle appears to signal a continuation to the downside. The sell signal happens when price breaks out of the triangle to the downside and retraces back to the lower line to test it as resistance. The logical stop is above the highest high in the triangle or above a confirmed supply zone, and the take profit is at least three times as large as the stop. The next pattern is the ascending triangle, which only has a bullish variation. The difference between a symmetrical triangle and an ascending triangle is that in the latter, the highs form a horizontal line and the lows form an upsloping line. This signifies the imminence of a bullish market by the creation of higher lows. The buy signal happens when price breaks the upper line to the upside and retraces back to it to test it as support. The stop can be below the lowest low in the triangle as a standard or below a confirmed demand zone the take profit target at least three times as big as the stop. The other pattern that finishes the continuation triangles is the descending triangle, which only has a bearish variation. In the descending triangle, the upper line is downsloping and the lower line is horizontal. The progressive creation of lower highs signifies the imminence of a bearish market, hence why the descending triangle is a bearish continuation pattern. The sell signal happens when price breaks the lower line to the downside and retraces back to it to test it as resistance. The stop can be above the highest high in the triangle as a standard or above a confirmed supply zone and the take profit target at least three times as big as the stop. To finish off the continuation chart patterns we have the cup and handle pattern which has a bullish and a bearish variation. Let's begin with the bullish variation first. The cup and handle is formed by two convex arcs. One large arc followed by one small arc where the highs seem to be hitting a resistance wall. The two arcs in alignment make the price pattern resemble a cup and handle, hence the name of the pattern. The fact that the handle or the smaller arc retraces just a little bit and then hits that resistance wall again signifies bullish power. So when the price breaks the resistance and retraces back to test it as support, we have a buy signal. The logical stop should be placed below the lowest low in the handle and the target should be at least three times as large as the stop. The bearish variation of the cup and handle is actually called reverse cup and handle and it looks like a cup upside down. In other words, we have a price formation composed by two concave arcs, one large and one small. The lows of these arcs seem to be hitting a strong support, so when the price finally breaks the support to the downside, it retraces back to test it as resistance, we have a sell signal. The stop should be above the highest high in the handle or the small arc and the take profit target should be at least three times as large. This finishes the continuation patterns. Now we must move on to the final section where we talk about the neutral patterns. The distinction about neutral patterns is that price can be going up or down before the pattern and it can go up or down after the pattern. So the key thing to look for is the direction that price breaks out of the pattern. Where price was going before the pattern doesn't seem to be that important when we are talking about neutral patterns. The neutral patterns are composed by four types of triangles. Let's begin by the ascending and descending triangles first. The ascending triangle, as we saw earlier, can be either a bullish continuation pattern, meaning that price will be going up, and then the ascending triangle will confirm a continuation to the upside or the ascending triangle can be a neutral pattern that means that the direction the market was going before the pattern is irrelevant what matters is the breakout direction that confirms the ascending triangle if price breaks the upper line of the ascending triangle it means that price is probably going to the upside 
If it breaks the lower line of the triangle, it means that it is probably going to the downside. The way to trade either direction is the same as all other chart patterns we saw. We wait for a breakout and then wait for price to retrace to the breakout line or neckline. In the case that price breaks out to the upside, the stop should be below a confirmed demand zone and the target should be at least three times as the stop size. In the case that price breaks the pattern to the downside, the stop should be above the upper horizontal line and the target should be at least three times as big as the stop. In the case of a descending triangle, we have the exact same situation. The only difference is that the upper line of the triangle is downsloping and the lower line of the triangle is horizontal. Once again, since this is a neutral pattern, the trader must pay attention to where price breaks the pattern. If it breaks it to the upside, the stop should be below the lower horizontal line with a target at least three times as big. If price breaks the pattern to the downside, the stop should be above a confirmed supply zone with a target at least three times as big. Following the exact same rationale once again, we have two other types of triangles that finish the category of neutral chart patterns. We have the symmetrical contracting triangle and the symmetrical expanding triangle. The only thing that changes between these neutral triangle patterns is the angle of the upper and lower lines. Beginning with the symmetrical contracting triangle, we have upper and lower lines that converge to each other, so this pattern implies a decrease in volatility. If price breaks to the upside, the stop should be below the lowest low in the triangle or in a confirmed demand zone. And if price breaks to the downside, the stop should be above the highest high in the triangle or in a confirmed supply zone. The target should always be at least three times as big as the stop if you want to use this consistently in the long term. The next triangle is called symmetrical expanding triangle and this one implies an increase in volatility that can be quite challenging to trade. If price breaks out of the pattern to the upside, the stop should be below the lowest low in the pattern or below a confirmed demand zone. If price breaks the pattern to the downside, the stop should be above the highest high in the pattern or above a confirmed supply zone. The target in all situations should be at least three times as big as the stop. This finishes off the exposition of the most relevant chart patterns for trading. We can notice that there are a few things that repeat across all patterns. The first thing relates to the proper way of trading these patterns, just to wait for price to break out of the pattern and then wait for price to retrace and test the line as support or resistance depending on which side of the line we are talking about. When it comes to chart patterns, this is the best moment to enter. However, price doesn't always retrace to the breakout line or neckline to give you the opportunity to enter. Sometimes price will break the pattern and just keep going. This is a problem because the more anxious traders will try to chase price without waiting for it to retrace to the proper entry point. This is part of the need for action and part fear of missing out opportunities. The problem, however, is that if a trader chases prices like that, he necessarily needs to dramatically increase the distance between the entry point and the correct stop loss placement, and that implies that the target must be much larger if the trader wants to respect the correct risk management guidelines, which he or she definitely should. Another way of thinking about this is that if you don't wait for the correct entry point to occur, which doesn't always happen, you will be taking more risk than what's necessary and your trade will have a lower probability of hitting the target. Some traders will try to bypass this problem by altering the stop loss placement, which is a dangerous idea. If you change the correct stop loss placement because you want to decrease your risk, you will end up increasing your risk in the end, because if you place your stop in the wrong place, you will not have the extra protection of buyers and sellers in the proper zones. So you will decrease your stop size, but at the same time, you will increase the probability that the stop gets triggered. All of this means that if you want to use chart patterns for trading, you will need to have the discipline to wait for the proper entry signal to appear. And that means sometimes you will need to see patterns developing in front of you, and you will need the discipline to let price go without trading because the proper entry signal didn't happen. All of this is just part of a dangerous psychological game that is difficult to master but it is a subject for another course. When we talk about chart patterns, the ideal mode of trading is to watch price breaking out of the pattern, waiting for price to retrace back to the breakout line, observe if price still respects that line, 
and then open the trade with the proper risk reward ratios and correctly placed stops. Let's talk a little bit about the advantages and disadvantages of trading chart patterns and the hidden dangers you should watch out for. Let's begin by listing the advantages and then observing some details about them. The only real advantage of chart patterns is their simplicity. They are easy to memorize, easy to spot on price when they happen in their textbook form, and they have a very straightforward way of trading. They also have a built-in logic that you don't need to understand necessarily. That's why you memorize a pattern in the first place. Since they are simple, chart patterns don't leave much room for subjectivity. As far as the list of advantages go, that's about it. When it comes to disadvantages though, the list is a lot longer. Let's begin first by becoming aware that chart patterns are not always that easy to spot, since they can appear almost perfectly where they can be disturbed by a great amount of market noise. The market is not perfect, so sometimes you will need to focus a lot to actually see the pattern forming. Another disadvantage is that chart patterns are not a precise way of trading even when you follow the correct rules of entry, stop, and target. By definition, they will show you a late entry that is better than what you find in technical indicators, but it's still far from the necessary level of precision you need in order to trade safely in the long term. The simplicity of not having to analyze price more carefully comes with the cost of imprecision. If you want to become truly precise, which is a necessity, you will need to learn more advanced techniques and more refined price analysis concepts. There is no way around that. Another big disadvantage is that sometimes the chart patterns will fool you. Since the market has background noise, sometimes price will break the line, then retrace above or below the line, and go to the opposite of what the theory about the pattern proposes. There are times where you can be stopped out just for the pattern to do what it was supposed to do in the first place. There are all sorts of nasty and frustrating little events that can happen around these patterns. Focusing just on chart patterns will blind you to the other opportunities that happen in price. Keeping track of the chart patterns only can be a problem for beginners because that's the only thing they will be able to focus on. The real trading opportunities happen before chart patterns are confirmed and in many other places in price where chart patterns don't appear also. Chart patterns will encourage you to chase opportunities in the wrong place in the charts. As it was demonstrated before, the proper signal to enter the market doesn't always happen with chart patterns, and that means we will try to chase the opportunities out of a fear of missing them out. This is partly a matter of discipline and part a matter of the unreliability of the chart patterns technique. In a sense, the technique itself opens the possibility or encourages you to break the rules. This is something that almost no one talks about, but it's one of those realities of trading that are silent and yet deadly in the long term. Chart patterns don't exhaust all the possibilities that happen in price action. The famous chart patterns became famous because they reflect certain market scenarios that tend to be easier to spot, but they represent only a small portion of the available and exploitable market patterns. So when a trader limits himself or herself to the use of these patterns, he or she is not only limiting the trade precision, but also the variety of different situations that can be traded that is something that will decrease the number of opportunities you can see. The really important thing is that you learn the pitfalls and unreliability of this technique. This will make your progress a lot more than trying to perfect an average technique. Notice that I said the same thing about candlestick patterns in the free course I uploaded here on YouTube. The real advantage in these techniques is learning their flaws. That way you can perceive the sort of things you should get away from and the sorts of things you should strive for. Even though I think that these famous trading techniques are completely useless, they can add value to your knowledge if you understand their limitations. Instead of trying to perfect something that is unreliable, you should strive to learn from its defects. Knowing this stuff can also help you when you learn the more advanced techniques and ideas, because then you will have a good parameter to judge the unreliability of most technical analysis techniques in light of the professional price section ideas and concepts. This concludes the ultimate beginner's guide to chart patterns. I hope this brief course serves as a gateway for you to find better information and avoid getting trapped into the many pitfalls of the technique. The purpose of the ultimate beginner's guide series is precisely that, to show what the famous and superficial techniques are all about 
and then show the bad side of them, what you should avoid, and what you should pursue. If you want to learn more about trading, I have a ton of free content on my YouTube channel. You can find some basic information and some advanced stuff as well. If you want to learn about my premium content, please visit my website fractalflowpro.com. There you will find a table of contents of my paid courses, verified YouTube testimonials, and more. If you like the material I produce, please consider clicking the like button, subscribing to the channel, activating the notifications button, sharing the video, and leaving your feedback below in the comment section. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next videos. Take care.